Hey, it's Garrett. It's Andrea. And welcome to the Daily Devotional. Yeah. What is your most priceless item that you own? Okay, so I'm kind of torn with this because I'll, I'll give you the materialistic thing, but I do want to share the other, this more spiritual thing. Like I have a Bible that's from my great grandmother mm-hmm. that is, it's put away. I don't even, I don't even use it right now or open it up it's just to like kind of preserve it. And it has her handwriting in it. And so as far as like priceless possessions, like that's something that, that I just love that I have. And I want to do the same for our girls. Mm-hmm. And that's why the Bible I'm holding right now is, is marked up and everything too. I want the, the whole thing to be marked up. And so I have something like that to pass on. Mm-hmm. And anyway, that's the more the spiritual side. Materialistic, like it would probably be my... A uh, miniature Dallas Cowboys helmet signed by Dak Prescott. Aww. And you gave me that gift. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. So, yeah. So, th- if that went away or something happened to that, I would be pretty devastated for a while. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that you liked it that much. Yeah. No, that was a really good gift. Huh. Yeah. High five myself. Right. And But, I mean, you know this about yourself. Like, you are the gift giver. I, I try really hard. Yeah. Like, really all, all of my favorite things. The... You surprised me with golf clubs one year, and I, I still love those golf clubs. <laughs> like, like you just have this way of just giving really good gifts. Thanks, pal. Yeah. Well, okay. This is my favorite, favorite parable. All right. Ever. Okay. It's the pearl parable. The pearl parable. That's what we call it. Good job. Thanks. I don't know. Like, people call it, like, what is it? The pearl of price. The, the pearl of great price. Pearl of Great Price. Yeah. I don't know. It's a pearl parable to me. Anyways, I, whenever I do kids' church, I absolutely love teaching on this one. I love hearing what the kids have to say because they will tell you some really cool things. Yeah, they will. They really will. But I love teaching on it because the pearl represents salvation. Yeah. And this might be boring to some people, but, well, go ahead. You you tell about the parable. Okay. And then I'll I'll chime in later. Okay. So the parable of great price. Bum, right. Bum, bum. <laughs> so it's really simple. It's just a couple verses. Jesus is drawing this comparison. He said it's like someone that finds this treasured pearl and he is willing to go and sell everything, everything that he owns, every piece of property, everything just to possess this one thing. And he's making that comparison to the salvation that we have in him, the freedom, the, making that comparison to, to the kingdom of God and just our willingness to say, you know what? There is nothing in this life that is more valuable than being able to find Jesus. This is so cool to me because a lot of times when we think about salvation, we think about just our location. We think uh-huh. about United States of America. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just going to say it how it is. Depending on where you're at, Mm -hmm. we're kind of sleepy here. The church is kind of sleepy. Mm -hmm. When you start thinking about the persecution that is going around the world Mm -hmm. and you really start just diving in to what is going on Mm -hmm. and people who are actually trying to find Jesus and the missionaries going out and spreading the gospel it will blow your mind. We have some friends who are missionaries mm-hmm. and they are going out in Vanuatu mm-hmm. and they are spreading to the tribes. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not like this literally going into the jungles mm-hmm. and spreading the gospel into the tribes. Like they talk to the chiefs of the tribes and they're learning who Jesus is. Who they've never known before. Yeah. Like this is the first time they've ever even heard the gospel. Mm-hmm. When you start thinking about this it will blow your mind and you will start going oh my gracious where have i been am i looking at my salvation as a pearl i'm living in the united states of america where i can pray worship i have known that i can go to church at any point in my entire life Mm -hmm. i can read the bible at any point like Literally, people will make fun of the gospel, and there are people in tribes. There are people in China being persecuted. I don't know. I know I'm talking in, like, segments here, 
But like when you really dive into it, it will blow your mind. The countries that don't even have the Bible Mm -hmm. to read, when you look into that, it will blow your mind. The fact that I'm sitting here holding on to the word of God in my lap right now. Mm-hmm. And the people who can't even do that in the world. Yeah. They don't even have it in their language. Yeah. Today. Yeah. 2024. Yeah. They don't, they don't even have it. And we probably have 50 Bibles in our house. Right. And I think we definitely take all of this for granted because even when it comes to, to Bibles, uh, we've heard stories where there might, for an entire village, there might be one Bible that's shared among everybody. Right. And that's the most value, valuable possession that they have. Mm-hmm. And there are definitely things that we do take for granted. Mm-hmm. Just our ability just to be able to choose whether or not we go to church or not. Whether or not, mm-hmm. you know, we're we're not really, when we really think about it, we're really under no pressure, mm-hmm. you know, as far as that goes. And we have complete freedom and it's kind of sad what we do with that freedom. Mm -hmm. It's kind of sad that we don't use it to its max. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right. I think there is a sleepiness in the church and I, I want to be woken back up. Um, and I don't even know if backup's the right, I don't know if I've ever been just awake in that way, Mm -hmm. just to where this is the most treasured thing that I have Mm -hmm. because I know myself. And I can get distracted by other treasures and other things. That's been our last year. Like of my my personal, my last year, like, you know, I've had a I had a hard time just keeping my focus on the things that God called me to do because we were going through so much as a family. I felt like I needed to take care of everything on my own. Mm-hmm. I felt like I needed on my own to make the money that our household needed. And I look at this last year. We made, we made more than we'd ever made, but had nothing to show for it on the other side because we were trying to do it all on our own. And, and so I see my own self and think, wow, I'm not treasuring this freedom that I have to be a pastor. And at any moment, any time I can, I can post something about Jesus. I can talk about him. I have, I have this great facility that people can come to. We're laughing because it's an old skating rink, but it doesn't matter. But we have a a place for people to meet and that doesn't get used enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I think about all those things and this, this, what we have is so valuable. Mm -hmm. Um, I just wonder if we have the willingness to sell everything just to have this one thing.